Should you move to Michigan? The debate that might sit pretty heavily on your mind because all you hear about is how much the weather sucks and that this place is shaped like a mitten. Well, in this video, I'm going to break down the question, should you move to Michigan? Oh, and stick around until the end because I will break down the biggest complaints about Michigan these days. Let's get into it. Before I jump into breaking down this question, I want you to ask yourself why you're asking the question in the first place. Does your current state not offer enough? Are you looking for a change in scenery? Or is Michigan just the farthest place away from an ex-girlfriend or boyfriend? Let these questions sink in a little bit, and while you're doing that, I'll give you some reasons why Michigan will take you in with open arms. What's going on everyone, Andrew McManaman here with Living in Michigan, and I make videos about moving to, moving within, and sharing knowledge all about the great state of Michigan. On top of that, I help people with their real estate needs too. Did you let those questions simmer some more? Good, because aside from Michigan's extraordinary natural landscape, distinct seasons, or ability to call yourself a Michigander, Michiganian, or a Youper, depending on where you're planning on going, there's a lot more that meets the eye, or meets the mitten, I should say. It's time for you to get some real insight about living in the state of Michigan, because you typing that question into Google most likely gathers feedback from sources and people not even in this state. So, pop some popcorn, take a seat as I go over some cool things about Michigan, and be sure you stick around until the end to hear about the biggest and current complaints about living here. Aside from being surrounded by the Great Lakes, as you know Michigan has 65,000 inland lakes and ponds, which means that any person in this state is roughly 6 miles from one of those natural water sources. Pretty crazy, I know. The distinction of Michigan seasons is something I really enjoy most about the state. If you're in the south or out west, you just have a similar temperature year round. I would say you could call it spring and summer in those areas. But in Michigan, we have four committed seasons. And by committed, I mean Michigan has very hot summers, very cold winters, and a fall that makes for a perfect setting for fall festivities, and a spring season that is full of rain and lightning storms that makes the landscape as colorful as ever. I've talked to a lot of real estate professionals across the country just to get more insight about areas they cover and what the city life is like, along with the atmosphere overall, and it seems Michigan has a lot more diversity in terms of city offerings. In a lot of Michigan cities, you can throw a rock and hit a city that is completely different from the one next to it. The plus side of this is it makes the home search process very fun for you because you can cater your search based on what atmosphere fits best with your needs. For example, I'm a lake person, so it made a lot of sense to me to take a look at White Lake. It buddies up pretty close with West Bloomfield Township, which is literally nicknamed Lake Township of Oakland County. I can drive a few miles down the road and pass six all sports lakes. In the warmer months, I see people wearing bathing suits to gas stations, popping the tops on their Jeeps, and hauling their jet skis, which is just an awesome thing to see all the time. It feels like a tourist town, but in reality, over 89% of the residents here own their own home. I know this example was a little long-winded, but that's a prime real-life experience of someone catering their home search to an atmosphere they enjoy most. It's honestly something I didn't think about too much until I was looking at a home myself. Did I want a lake town? City life? rural suburb, the options are all there and you can find it all in a 20 to 30 minute radius. On top of that, Michigan was first for a lot of things such as first moving automobile assembly line and the first police radio system according to the Detroit police which makes the history of this state extremely rich. I won't bore you too much with a history lesson but whenever you have some time, click the link in the description to see just how amazing the history in Michigan actually is. Another big reason why Michigan comes up on people's radar is due to the cost of living. I have a video I made just for the cost of living in Michigan, which I will link in the description too, in case you want to have it all broken down for you. According to numerous sources, Michigan's cost of living is roughly 11 to 12% below the national average. So when you ask a Michigan resident if you should live here or not, they'll most likely tell you that we have been gifted with the beauty around each corner of the state, and if you enjoy the views, you'll appreciate not paying top dollar for the lifestyle as well. Think of when you're booking a hotel and the one with the best 
best views has a couple more zeros at the end of the nightly stay. Well, this state has the views without tacking on those few extra zeros. So as promised, what are the biggest complaints about living in Michigan right now? And I'm not just going to say because the winters are a little chilly, because you and I know that that's what takes people out of the state. But what about the people that are complaining and still living here? Two of the biggest complaints that have been around for a long time have to do with cars and roads. One being how much of a madhouse it is with drivers on the road. In Michigan, the expressways are 75 miles per hour for the most part, but that means somewhere around 80 to 85 miles per hour for the most part. There's no fast lane, slow lane, or passing lane. It's all fast. And if you're going the speed limit, you're probably going to be tailgated, flashed with brights, or angrily passed. What's interesting though is this is something I noticed for some expressways and not others. Some are calm and civil, and others you need to foil up the knuckles for road rage. What are you guys doing? Putting on the foil every game. Yeah, you want some of it. All jokes aside, it's like this in a lot of other states, but it seems to be a huge complaint in this state. On top of that, the roads are in need of some help, to put lightly. You can look up memes on Google right now and see how we are referred to as the Orange Barrel State due to the constant construction happening. My perspective might be a little off, but Orange Barrels just look like improvements to me. And if they're taking the time to redo roads and sidewalks all over the state, it's more than some other states do who don't even bother to take care of the issues until bumpers are falling off their cars. I'd have to say the biggest complaint as of late has to do with Michigan politics. I won't dive too much into this because I don't want this channel to be political, but with COVID causing parties to make certain decisions for a pandemic, they couldn't pinpoint the best plan of action along with some contradictions here and there, it pushed a lot of people to the edge. This is a given in a lot of states, but like I said, it's a common complaint here. Another big consumer complaint that has actually been on the top 10 list for numerous years is telemarketing. I don't know how bad it is for people in other states, or maybe it's just the fact that my phone number is all over the internet, but I get at least six to eight robocalls a day. You can block every single one of them, but Catherine, with some insurance provider, still manages to reach me. The last complaint I'll mention pertains to Michigan car insurance. For the Michigan folks watching this, you already know where I'm going with this, but for you out-of-staters, I'll let you in on a secret that's not so secret. Michigan structures their insurance to allow insurers to cover medical expenses even if the accident wasn't your fault. Michigan also has lifetime medical benefits with personal injury protection. There's pros and cons to this method, of course. Less lawsuits, less worry to get medical expense help. The downside of this is Michigan ranks one of the highest, if not the highest state with the most uninsured drivers, which makes sense when it's much more expensive than the other states. The insurance options have opened up a little bit, but it's still higher than most states. Question of the day, after watching this video, what are your thoughts about Michigan? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you're still back and forth about making the jump to living in Michigan, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Someone who has lived here for well over 20 years to help with your decision. If you find out it's somewhere you can't see yourself living after we have a conversation or two, there is no harm in just checking. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video about whether or not you should move to the Mitten State. If this video gave you just an ounce of value, give it a thumbs up, tap the subscribe button, and don't forget to smash the little bell so you are notified every time I come out with a new video. Stay tuned for the next one, you're gonna like it.